Okay, in this video, I just want to discuss uh, absolute value inequalities a little bit more. And I actually want to specifically talk about um, absolute value as, as it relates to distance uh, on a number line. Um, as you can see, most people know absolute value is simply take the negative x and it, the output is positive x. So if you had negative 7, it becomes 7. If you had positive 5, it stays positive 5. But there's a little bit more to it. Um, the absolute value also discusses distance in either direction on a number line. So what I've done is I've prepared three examples. So let's take the first example. And um, as you can see, uh, the obvious uh, expression is going to be a general inequality. Okay, It's going to be x is greater than or equal to 5, or x is less than or equal to negative 5. It's rather straightforward, basic uh, arithmetic or algebra problem. Okay, But there's another way to express this, and that's if you use an absolute value inequality. And basically, as you can see, if you had the absolute value of 5, it would equal 5. And if you had the absolute value of negative 5, it would equal 5. So there's some sort of relationship here. And I've actually written out the, uh, the inequality that will represent this. As you can see, it's the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 5. And it's pretty intuitive. You just look at it. And uh, 5 and, of course, 6, 7 and on, and negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, on down, and everything in between. Okay, so that's the first example. Then the next example, we have a number line graph. And again, uh, there's an open circle at negative 3 uh, and then going on down, and an open circle at 5 and going on up. So we're looking for less than negative 3, greater than 5. And the obvious uh, direct inequality we could use is simply x is greater than 5 or x is less than negative 3. And everything in between would not fit either one of these possibilities. But how would we express this as an absolute value inequality? Well, as I mentioned before, a lot of absolute values, it's related to distance. So what we have here is we have a distance. We're trying to find what value of x in the middle would be the distance to each of these endpoints and going outward. And there's, there's kind of a simple three-step process to do this, to uh, discover the inequality. And the first step is simply find the midpoint of these two critical values, these endpoints. Okay, And then the halfway point between negative 3 and 5 would be 1. Okay, and it's simply taking the average. This plus this is 2 divided by 2 is 1. And notice it's 4 units from here and 4 units from there. So let's see if we can write the inequality based on that. Okay, um, we're taking any value of x is what we're looking for. Okay, and what we want is this related distance is the distance from any value of x to 1. So in this case, 5 to 1 is 4 units. Negative 3 to negative 1 is also 4 units. It's just in the other direction and the absolute value, and we want it to be greater than, on the outside, must be greater than 4 units. Okay, 4 this way, 4 this way. And so our final absolute value inequality is x minus 1 is, the absolute value of x minus 1 is greater than 4. And of course you can check your answers to see. And as I've written down here as a note, um, notice how it's, it's expressed. This is the distance from any x to 1 the difference between x and 1, the distance, must be greater than 4 units. I wanted to flip back real quick. Um, here was our first example. We had x is greater than or equal to the absolute value of 5. And notice here how I've rewritten it. x minus 0, the absolute value of x minus 0 is greater than or equal to 5, which of course is the same thing as the absolute value of x. But what it does is it emphasizes that this is a statement that the difference between any x that you choose and 0 must be greater than or equal to 5 units. So here we have our 0 as our middle point. And if we go 5 units up this way, we're at 5. And if we go 5 units in the other direction, we're at negative 5. So I just wanted to use that to clarify that when you see just an x, it's the same thing as x minus 0. Then the final example, uh, see if you can do it on your own. Um, here we have negative 7 and negative 1, and we want to find all the values within there uh, in a certain range. And of course, the direct way to write this expression would be simply x is between negative 7 and less than or equal to negative 1, including because it's a closed circle. Um, you could also write it as an and statement. x is less than or equal to 1, and it's also less than, greater than 
then negative seven must be both. Okay, so using our three-step process, let's let's come up with an absolute value inequality for this graph. Uh, what is the midpoint? The midpoint is going to be negative four. Negative seven plus negative one is negative eight. Divided by two is negative four. So we have our midpoint is going to be x minus minus four. So we're looking for distances from any x to negative four. And it has to be less than, we want it within three units. So it's going to be less than three units. And of course, we tack on the equal because it could also be equal to three units. And there's our statement. Um, it can be also simplified. We can make it the absolute value of x plus four is less than or equal to three. And of course, you can easily check it. You just plug in these values and, and make sure that anything outside of here does not work. Um, and again, it's just a statement. The difference between x and negative four must be less than or equal to three units.